Okay, let us continue our discussion for the improper integral. Okay. Here I uh, I take the example number two from Stewart and J. 2015, chapter 5. Here actually an example of, I mean the use of, or the use of improper integral in pharmacokinetics. Okay. If the CT, the CT is defined by con, concentration of the uh, salicylic acid, in bloodstream of the volunteers. Bloodstream in Bahasa Indonesia means peredaran darah. And the T is measured in hours. And the C is measured in milligram per milliliter. We want to calculate the integral of CT dt from zero until infinite. Uh, if we, if we look at on the graph, if we look at on the graph of the CT, just the following. For the first time, the concentration in bloodstream of the SA is zero, and then increasing very fastly, and then uh, tend to the maximum value, and then decreasing ten to zero. By using this curve, we can interpret that the integral of CT dt from zero until infinite represents the area of the blue shaded area. This is the shaded area, the blue one. What is the area? And we can interpret by using uh, calculus and graphic and also we can interpret by using the pharmacokinetic point of view so the problem is what about the improper integral of this it is divergent or not if the function like this if you ask me uh, where does the CT equation come from as mathematician we don't know but we can ask to the pharma uh, kinetics uh, expert the sali the sali the salicylic acid given by this one by using the simple uh, integration the improper integral ct from zero to infinite is equal to the limit of b then the infinite of the integration from 0 until the PCT dt. So this is equal 11.4, the limit of the integral 0 until the PT e power minus t dt. By using this substitution, very simple substitution, then we can count this integration. This is actually definite integration. Just by using uh, the formula of the t e minus t, we can actually use this uh, partial uh, partial integration and we have that this integral is equal to minus p e power minus p minus e power minus p plus 1. If, uh, if you take the limit p tend to infinite, then this part, of course, this part tend to 0. This is also tend to 0. So altogether, if you take the limit, the p tend to infinite, then this integration tend to 0 plus 0 plus 1 equal to 1 actually okay so altogether we have that this improper integral is equal to 1 uh, because uh, this is equal to 1 that means this limit is equal to 1 so altogether, the the uh, improper integral of CT dt from zero until infinite is equal to 11.4 times one. 
equal to 11.4 so this is equal to 11.4 milligram per liter that is so this is uh, actually we can say that this example is only simple application of uh, of improper integral in pharmacokinetics the second tip is unbounded integral I mean the, the improper integral with unbounded integral what is the integral? the integral is the function for instance by using the example what about the integral of 1 over square root of x from 0 until 1 the interval itself is not bounded it, the interval itself, itself from 0 until 1 is not unbounded that means bounded but the integral 1 divided by the square of x is unbounded nearly 0 why? because 1 divided by 0 is equal to infinite so this type of integral even though the interval is bounded but the function is unbounded at zero so that this is also called improper integral with bounded interval but unbounded function so here we see that the function of one of a square root of x is unbounded in in uh, zero so we, how, how we can uh, how how can we we calculate improper integral like this? We have also take the limit from x from the right side to zero. X tend to zero from the right side. Yeah, one of a, a square root of x of the x tend to zero from right is equal to infinite and therefore it is also improper so we can uh, calculate for evaluating this uh, improper integral in the, in, the, in the next page the function just like this 1 over a square root of a like this so we have to calculate about the integral from 1 until let's say c or maybe uh, 1 until x and the x tend to 0 okay so the problem that that make this is improper integral is that 1 over the square root of x tend to infinite if the x tend to 0 from right so here we have the following uh, v. the integral from c until 1 1 over the square root of x dx that mean like this from c until 1 that mean the area of the blue one the area of the shaded area here the shaded area the blue one is equal to the integral from c until 1 of 1 over square root of x dx and this is equal to 2 times 1 minus square of x because this is equal to this and we take the limit c tend to 0 that means the square of the square root of c is also tend to 0 so if we take the limit this is equal to 2 times 1 minus 0 so equal to 2 that means this improper integral is actually uh, by taking this limit equal to 2 that means this improper integral is converges to up uh, or convergent to, to 2. Later on we want to define that this improper integral is equal to 2. This is the first example. So by using this the previous example, yeah, we define that if the uh, function fx, yeah, if the function of fa the integral of f dx from a until b in the point of c from right in the point of I'm sorry in the point of a from right 
10 to infinite or minus infinite 10 to finite or minus infinite I mean if the limit of f a a 10 to a from the right is equal to plus infinite or minus infinite then this integral is improper integral and it is defined by using the limit of integral c b f a dx dx the c 10 to a from right this is the definition of the improper integral yeah, the second tip on the other hand if the improper come from the the b that means the limit of x tend to the b from left of the f a is equal to plus infinite or minus infinite then the definition of the improper integral is equal to the limit of the integral of a until c the c tend to the b from left of f a j x that is the illustration is just like that in the first illustration is this illustration here in the in the left side and on the right side the improper integral happen in b and in the right in the left side happen in a okay for example uh, the integral from uh, 0 until 1 of the dx divided by x minus 1 power 2 divided by 3 uh, where the, the graph like, look like this we see here in the point of 1 in the point of 1 here in the point of 0 yes it is a normal real number but in the point of 0 from from left then the function tend to infinite so that this is improper integral it look like that it look like not improper integral but it does it is uh, improper integral because the limit of this function tend to infinite if the x tend to one from left okay so how can we count this one how can we find the value of the improper this one urea of course we use the limit the limit of c plus one from uh, the left of the integral of zero until c of the dx x minus one to the power two divided by three uh, it is very easy to see by using definite integral uh, by using antiderivative that the antiderivative of this one is equal to 3 times x minus 1 power 1 over 3 plus c <laughs> then we can take this stop at the moment Okay, we continue. Uh, as I told you before, that the integral 
the improper integral is equal to this limit the c tend to my uh, to tend to one from left because the antiderivative of this is equal to this then we have the following the limit okay so the limit is equal to the antiderivative of c minus f f0 the f is, is the antiderivative of the f of the small f okay because this fc minus f0 is equal to this and this is equal to 3 this come from uh, the c 10 to 1 that means 3 times 1 minus 1 it is 0 and minus 3 times minus 1 is equal to 3 so equal to 3 so actually this limit is equal to 3 that mean convergent and therefore by using our formula that our improper integral here is equal to 3 what does that mean geometrically this number 3 is equal to the area yeah, between 0 until 1 under the curve of 1 over 1 minus 3 power 2 divided by 3 that is next for example we want to evaluate the function ln we want to integrate the function ln x dx from uh, 0 until 1 is it improper yes it is why because uh, the function uh, ln if you if we take the ln ln 1 is equal to uh, 0 what about the ln 0 here ln 1 is equal to 0 but ln 0 is equal to minus infinite so this is actually improper on x is equal to 0 so we have take to the limit of the integral uh, from the right until 0 plus from, from right so we can count in the following page so it is very easy to understand that this open uh, this improper integral is equal to the limit of the c 10 to 0 plus that means the c 10 to 0 from right of the integral c until uh, 1 ln x dx so first of all we have first of first of all we have to, to, to count to calculate this definite integral it is very easy by using you know uh, partial uh, integration uh, to count this integral okay uh, by using uh, you know by using partial integration we have the, that the antiderivative of the ln x dx is equal to ln x time x minus a so altogether that this integral is equal to f1 minus fc it is equal to 1 ln 1 it is equal to 0 minus 1 minus c ln c plus c if we take that the c that the c uh, tend to plus from right yeah this is of course uh, zero this is one but this is ln zero plus this is infinite so i think the result is uh, this limit yeah this limit the c ln c when the c tend to uh, zero from right so as by using the calculus one we have equal to the c divided by one over c by using a very simple limit in calculus one it is equal to zero because it is equal to zero so altogether it is equal to zero minus uh, one uh, minus zero yeah, minus 0. So it is equal to minus 1. So minus 1 come from this. 
this is zero, this is minus one, and this, this limit, take the limit C, turn to C plus, it is equal to zero. So altogether, it is equal to minus one. So this improper integral is actually minus minus one. This is the second example. Uh, maybe the last example, example number eight from Claudia. What about the integral uh, of one over two square? Uh, 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 what about the in integral of one over x square from minus one until one? Here we have that one over two square is not defined, of course, at point is, is equal to zero. Even though in the power in the uh, in the bound interval minus one and bound interval one, the function f(x) is defined, but in the middle, in between minus one and one, in x is equal to zero is not defined because one divided by zero is not defined. So that this is actually improper integral happen at x is equal to zero. So we have to count by the following way: the improper integral of one of uh, x square from minus 1 to 1 we have to split into part that is the limit of from minus 1 until c and from c until 1 in the first part this is the c take the limit to, to 0 from left and this is c take the limit uh, to 0 from right we have to count one by one of these two parts the situation in graph is, is look like this, yeah. In here in x to, to zero is very dangerous, so that we have to, to count one by one. So we have to count one by one of the each integration of the each integration, I mean this integration and that integration. The first integration is the following. The integral from minus one until c of the c tend to uh, 0 minus of this one. This is equal to the fc minus f minus 1, where the fc is the antiderivative of 1 over, one over x squared, that is 1 minus 1 over x. So this is equal, equal to minus 1 over c minus 1. If we take the limit that is 10 to 0, because it, the c tend to 0, so this is 10 to infinite, I'm sorry, 10 to infinite minus 1. Infinite minus 1 is equal to my, uh, infinite. By the same uh, way, we have that this part is equal to infinite. So these two part, actually, these two part, both of them are infinite. So in conclusion, that the integration is divergent because the value is uh, is infinite. Okay? So that's all that I want to say about our improper integral. I don't want to describe comparison result for improper integral detail, but I want to describe uh, very briefly uh, the comparison result for improper integral is it's just saying about the comparison between the function, the blue function uh, fx is greater than gx and the function gx, the, uh, the black one is greater than fx, the blue one. And then we can compare about the, the improper integral. Uh, so actually we can compare like this. If the, the, the function of g a is greater than f a, and we take the integral of a until infinite, from a until infinite, this is also from a until, then they take, then they take the limit. <coughs> and by using the limit, we have that, actually it is in between. Of course, this improper integral is big is bigger than this that proper integral.
Maybe one more example. Okay. Uh, the comparison can be justified to describe either the improper integral is divergent or convergent. For example, we want to evaluate the, inter the improper integral from a to the power of minus x square dx from 0 until infinite. Okay? We want to justify either this is convergent on or not. The function fa is equal to a minus x squared is continuous and positive function for x positive. But we cannot compute the antiderivative of fa because this function have no derivative. I am sorry, have no antiderivative. As you know from calculus 1 that this function has no antiderivative. So we cannot use the definite integral. So how can we justify that this is convergent or not just by using compa comparison? Comparison, okay? Uh, how can we can compare? The comparison is just like just like this. We see from the calculus what that the a to the power of minus x square is in between zero and one because this lies between these two integral. So we have the in the, the improper integral of this function from zero until uh, infinite is less than the integration of one from zero until infinite. And we can count this in integration, I mean the, integra the integration of, of one. So that we have that this actually less than the integration from 0 until 1 dx it is equal to 1 and it is finite and because it is finite then this is finite okay so in the first part of this integration this is finite okay but it's still a problem because we have to check this one if this integration is divergent or infinite then this integral also become infinite. But if this finite, then it is become finite. So we have to check this integration. Let's go to this integration. The integration of of uh, of uh, the integration of a to the power of minus x from 1 until infinite dx is equal to this limit and it is equal to a to the power of minus 1 and it is finite and we see here because this is the power is minus and this is square so that the 0 is less than a to the power minus x square is less a or equal than a to the power of minus a and it is easy to understand because this function is bigger then this function just by a simple way okay so as we know that uh, the integral of this function can be find by the following way although uh, the z lies for the z between uh, zero and infinite this integral can be computed only approximately. We cannot compute exactly because this function has no antiderivative. We can show very different tool which don't cover in this tag, but it is covered in statistics. In statistics, we know that this integral is equal to a square root of phi divided by two. But anyway, this integration is actually less than this integration and this integration is actually equal to 